Shai Poalko, Executive Director of the American Historical Society of Germans from Russia. And I'd like to welcome you, Margaret, uh, to our museum and thank our you library. Thank so for having us. Yeah, thank you. It's great to have you here. Um, I understand that you're interested in learning a little bit about um, Renzes, or as we often call them, Virox. Well, what would you like to know? Do you well, first off, let's start with just how the Germans from Russia came to settle in this area of the country. Okay, I'll give yeah. you a thumbnail sketch. Awesome. All right, and <laughs> in, uh, um, Catherine the Great was actually a German princess, mm -hmm. and she married into the Russian royal family, and um, she became the Tsarina and was, um, you know, very interested in protecting the western part of her empire. Mm -hmm. She wanted um, citizens that would be loyal to her. And so since she was German, she issued an invitation to uh, people that were in the Germanic areas, um, also France and the Netherlands, Scandinavia, and she asked them to come to Russia and promised them some really intriguing things. Mm -hmm. And so uh, people took her up on her offer. And there were about 30,000 people that over the course of about four years went to uh, Russia. Wow. They settled along the Volga River, uh, and these are colonies, all these little dots, uh, Margaret, are colonies where they established villages. And they were from very small to the largest one eventually became about the size of Beatrice, mm -hmm. about 14,500 people. Uh, you know, she had promised them all these things and she had said that they were going to be forever, that these promises were going to be, you know, yeah. this was theirs forever. And in about 1840-ish, uh, her great-grandson came into power. So he was Alexander II and he reneged on those promises. And so he said that people were going, the German people were going to have to become more assimilated into Russia. They would no longer have special privileges. So anyway, what happened was they could see there was some turmoil. There also became a famine in the land. And so they were interested in finding a new home because what had been promised forever was being taken away. So scouts were sent to the United States and um, they looked at areas around Sutton, Nebraska, and um, you know even into the Kansas uh, areas, and they liked what they saw because it was similar to the land they had over in Russia. Mm -hmm. So they came back and they said, yes, it's good. It's a great place to go. Some came, more came. Things in Russia became a little more difficult. And essentially in like 1921-22, the door closed mm -hmm. and there was not any more immigration from mm -hmm. Russia to the United States at that time. Would you like to give us a little briefing on how your ancestors came over from Europe and then how they brought the sandwich? You bet. So, so my family is essentially German. Mm -hmm. Um, actually, both sides of my family, um, mother and father's um, ancestry. Um, but anyway, they migrated to Russia as, a, as many Germans did when opportunities were presented by Catherine the Great uh, to do some farming over there. And eventually they migrated from Russia over to the United States. And my family, my grandparents um, and their parents settled in Sutton, Nebraska. And ultimately, my grandmother, San Sally Everett, um, moved to Lincoln, Nebraska. Apparently was quite adept at making these sandwiches and um, ultimately, of course, chose to, to make, give it a shot and make it a restaurant chain. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, of course, proud of, of her, her background. And, and it's great to still celebrate that ethnic heritage even today um, as, as we all become Americans, of course, and, and lose our identification with some of our ethnic background. It's great to every day still celebrate um, some of that with, with our family. Other, um, when soldiers began coming home from the war, from World War II, she then wanted to open up a business to give more jobs, or to create more jobs for the community, correct? That is correct. Um, so ultimately she did choose to open up a restaurant to, to keep them busy. And just a family business, my grandmother started it and her, you know, children worked in the business and it was just a, pretty traditional one restaurant family business until my father chose to um, chose to open up a second location and he's the one that truly had you know sort of the entrepreneurial vision of, of making this a much bigger thing. Um, 
you know, we want to continue to evolve and we're certainly going to celebrate uh, being a successful business for 70 years, which is, is kind of unusual, but beyond that, just still being a family business, we're especially mm -hmm. proud of that. Because it's you and, many, and your siblings that... I have two sisters it. that yep. um, are, are part of the leadership team um, that, that, that own and operate the business, and my mother still comes into the office once in a while, so we're, oh. we're really, you know, we've been working together in earnest full-time at, at the corporate office for more than 27 years together now. So uh, we, we've made it work and uh, we're really proud to you know, say that we've made it work because ultimately passing business and family businesses on to from one generation to another becomes incrementally more challenging. And uh, we're proud to say we're in the third generation. Hopefully, you know, with our children, we'll have a fourth generation that will come forward and, and continue the operations of a business.